Grab a piece of paper. I want you to write down three things, please, that you are not being present to in your business. For example, maybe you're not being present to the fact that you are growing really rapidly, but you don't have the infrastructure to handle it. I was talking with eBay the other day, and they said, we are hiring 13,500 people this year. We have no idea how to hire that many people. We have no idea how, how to onboard that many people. Right? I mean, just, ah, how are we going to deal with that? And they were really present to the recruiting. They were present to the onboarding, but they weren't present to the cultural impact of bringing 13,500 more people into the fray. Write down three things that you are not being present to in your business. Maybe you need more infrastructure. Maybe you're really not doing enough marketing. Maybe your sales cycle is too long and you haven't been dealing with it. What are three things that you are not being present to in your business? Please write them down. Maybe you want to get some more sales leads, but you're not getting out there networking, right? What are the three things that we are kind of avoiding or not being present to in our business? All right, do you have your three things? A couple of examples, please. Data integrity. I'm sorry, data integrity. Yes. Uh, huge, yes, okay, yeah. We're getting all this data, or are we watching the integrity of it? Yeah. Generation gap, the world is changing, customers are employed. So I was just talking to Pandora. Pandora has 50 5 baby managers <laughs> that are wet behind the ears that are in their 20s, that have never managed people before, the average amount of people they're managing, 10. Can you imagine being a little pup in your 20s, being thrown into this rapid growth company and saying, oh, here, here's 10 people to manage. It's like, I don't even know how to, how to show up to work. You know? How about I manage 10 people? Yeah, yeah. So that's one thing that Pandora just got present to. Whoa, we've got these emerging leaders. We better cultivate them. Yeah, good. OK, what else? Other things that you just realized, whoa, hey, I'm not present to that. One more example. You guys are totally present to everything. I am impressed. Specific training for specific members of the team. Specific training for specific members of the team. We have to constantly be evolving our people. That is totally our job to have a career path, an individual development plan, and for them to be able to see their next two possible promotions. No promise. Someone was saying process. Process. Standard operating procedures so we don't keep reinventing the wheel. Good, good. Um, when, uh, do you guys want this presentation, would this be helpful? Should we send it to you? Yes. Okay, so what we'll do, if someone could take notes, Barbara, um, we're gonna send, the, send these guys the template for SOPs, okay, for standard operating procedures. Okay, cool beans, good, let's keep going. Now, what happens, what happens when we actually start getting more focused and paying attention to where we're not being present? I'll show you. This company, this lighting and manufacturing company, had a challenge. And their situation was that they were growing really, really quickly, and yet they, they had all these cool opportunities, so they weren't focusing on really anything very effectively. They were kind of getting a little schizoid and focusing on a smidge here, a smidge there, a smidge there, right? And they were in such high overwhelm that they were hanging out where? What part of the brain were they hanging out in? Limbic system within the mammalian brain, thank you, yes. And when they were there, they weren't being very productive. So first, we had to bring them down off the ceiling, you know, grab their ankle, bring them down, and focus on what's really gonna move the needle. You can't do everything. What three things do you need to achieve this year? What's gonna change everything for you? We got clear on that. Here's what happened. Revenue in 2009, 3.4. Oh, in 2008, their revenue was 150 grand. 150 grand, okay? And they came to us and we said, you can't afford us. You know, it's gonna cost 100 grand to work with us. You've got 150 and you're not, it, it ain't gonna work. The math is bad, bad math. And they said, no, 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 we have to. So we said, okay, fine, you know, if you can, if you can not eat for a year. Um, so, so we went from 150 grand to 3.4 in 2009. Then the next year, 7 million, the next year, 15, and now they're doing 30. The power of focus is profound. So reducing your options. People like to have a million options. No, bad, circle slash. A few options that are gonna move the needle, focus on those little critters, okay? 
All right. Um, less is more. All right, good. Let's talk about being direct. And my little thingy just fell off. Being direct. To be direct is to be clear. And there are three domains where we are or are not clear in our communication. There's clarity in our words, saying exactly what it is that we need. There's clarity in our maps, clarity in our maps, and there's clarity in our intentions. All right. Um, how many of you guys watch South Park? But come on, just admit it. Okay. <laughs> South Park is like tacky and politically totally incorrect, but there's one episode of South Park that you all have to watch. This is homework. It's called The Underpants Gnomes. You must watch The Underpants Gnomes. If you have a teenage son, he will have it. Okay? <laughs> when you watch The Underpants Gnomes, you're going to learn a very valuable lesson about business. The underpants in South Park were all being stolen. Um, Tweak, who's a very high-strung child whose parents feed him caffeine on a regular basis, who's more high-strung as a result, had one pair of underpants left. He rounded up all the guys to sleep over to find out what is happening to my underpants. At about 3 in the morning, a little gnome shows up and takes his last pair. And he says, why are you doing this to me? I need these underpants. And the gnome says, it's just part of our business plan. <laughs> they follow the gnomes down to the big gnome cave. There are piles of underpants. All shapes, all sizes, all colors, underpants everywhere. Gnomes scurrying back and forth, pushing bins of underpants. It's underpants bonanza. The head gnome says, I understand you want to know our business plan. He fires up a PowerPoint. Slide one. We have a three-phase plan. Phase one, steal underpants. He says, clicker. Phase two, the slide is blank. Phase three, profit. <laughs> OK, you got it? Steal underpants, profit. What happens in phase two? <laughs> This is an example of clarity of maps, or lack of clarity of maps, right? So how are all the little gnomes going to get to profit? All, they, all they're doing is stealing underpants, right? So in clarity of maps, we say, OK, we're going to steal underpants. We're going to set up this global distribution chain. We're going to have these pay for performance sales reps. Here's what their compensation is going to be. Here's what their training is going to be. We're going to have a webinar every week for our, for our pay for performance sales team to make sure they're moving enough underpants. We're going to have this global marketing campaign to make sure people know that there are underpants to be gotten and we're the source. We're going to have that nice emotional connection. If I need underpants, I've got to go to the gnomes, right? So we haven't laid out that clarity of maps. And then we wonder why our people aren't performing. And often it's because they don't know how to get to where we want them to go. Clarity of maps. Clarity of intentions. Clarity of intentions. Often we don't necessarily do a brilliant job in helping our people know exactly what we want. This is where we get into implicit versus explicit communication. 